This is Italy. A gravel location filled with challenging turns, narrow roads surrounded by dangerous cliffs, and fast but tricky sectors. To get through these stages like a bullet train, make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's start with the alignment. Always a little bit of toe out to the front wheels to help with the cornering, and a little bit more toe into the rear wheels to help with the car's overall stability and faster corner drive outs. The camber has to be set at a medium low value because the surface grip on dirt and gravel stages is not as high as on asphalt stages, so the deformation of the tire when cornering is less. The front camber value has to be set just a little bit higher than the rear one because the deformation of the tire is also influenced by the pivoting motion from left to right when steering. In the differential step, you need to find the balance between putting the power down and the ability to stay on track and get the perfect line. So in this case, setting the rear driving lock as high as possible will help with the traction and corner driveouts, while on the front, a medium high lock value like this one will keep understeering away from you. The braking lock on the other hand should always be set a little bit lower than the driving lock, otherwise during heavy braking you may experience too much wheel locking and you may blow out the corners. And finally the preload ensures some additional lock under deceleration, so if you want some more stability from corner entry to mid corner, go for a medium value on the rear wheels and a lower one on the front wheels, to allow them to spin more independently from each other. On to the dampers, since here in Italy the tracks are narrow, there is not much room for cutting and only a few small jumps, you can set a slow bump just a little bit on the softer side. This way stability will be improved a lot. I set the fast bump stiff enough to ensure the best shock absorption for those 2 or 3 jumps and I've left the bump division at a medium value. For the rebound, to ensure the best stability, I've only softened them to a medium value because as I said, there are not many bumps and crests to lift the car many times throughout the stage, so quick extension is not that necessary. In the braking tab, a medium value for the braking force will do the trick here, combined with more braking pressure sent to the front wheels to allow for quick center of mass shifts from one tight corner to another. And man, you'll find a lot of this here. I've set the handbrake force to a medium high value because as mentioned above, the road is tight and dangerous, so I want to be able to rotate the car as sharp as possible before U-turns and the cute hairpins. The gears for this location were tricky to set up, because you'll find everything here, from very steep climbs to tight corners and also a decent amount of straights. So the gearbox is set for fast acceleration and a decent amount of top speed when needed, given the long ratio of the fifth gear. Now on the springs tab, as I mentioned in the damper settings, there are not that many dangers on the track surface, so raising the right height too much won't be necessary. This way you keep a low center of mass, leading to more stability. The spring rate is set on the softer side obviously, because we're on a gravel track and I say that these values ensure good rideability without compromising stability. Last but not least are the anti-roll bars. Given the nature of the track and the medium ride height, I've adopted the stiffer setting, this way minimizing the body roll leading to faster and more controllable cornering. Making videos like this takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to be able to get the best settings for each featured car class. But at some point I'm starting to feel limited by the capabilities of my old Logitech G29 steering wheel and its ability to mimic the force feedback required to feel each and every aspect of the track. Don't get me wrong, this is a great wheel and you can definitely be competitive with it, but to create a perfect tuning setup and also explain why and how I got those settings is the attention to details that matters most. Subscribing to my channel, liking and commenting on my videos and just being part of this amazing and growing community is a big support for me. But making a donation via the thanks button or becoming a member of this channel is an even greater one. This way I can satisfy my daily needs and invest in better gear so I can deliver more accurate tuning setups and better videos overall which you guys will benefit from. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track. Bye bye!